What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real, where we exclusively talk about basketball. The last couple days, I've been kind of racking my brain, trying to wait for something big to happen to react to. But then I, I basically came to the realization this morning that it doesn't really matter what I talk about. As long as it's basketball related, there are going to be some people that click on the video, and here you are. Thank you for that. So whenever there's an idea or something, um, a team that I want to talk about, a player I want to talk about, I'm just going to hit record and just publish it. Who cares? And today's team is the 76ers. I think I mentioned in the video from yesterday or two days ago when we were reacting to one free agency signing for every NBA team. I think I mentioned that, like, the 76ers are a team I, I really – I want to talk about. So here we are. Like they for the third year in a row, I want to say they're one of the most intriguing teams in the NBA. For a little background, um, going into last season, they were my pick to win the Eastern Conference. I was super excited about some of the things they did in the offseason. And obviously in hindsight, I was a little I was jumping a gun just a little bit. But I think that me now at the ripe age of the old age of twenty four, I realize uh you can't just always just sign names and think it's gonna work. It's not just 2K. I make a lot of 2K videos on my main channel, but in real life, it just doesn't work like that. So when they signed Al Horford, though I was hesitant about the length of the contract and how much money they gave him, which is still true, I was happy to see him alongside Joel Embiid because in my mind, there's not going to be many centers in the league that can stop Joel Embiid. And the only guy that really did pretty good at it, it was Marcus Saul and it was Al Horford. And they got rid of Al Horford by bringing him in. Tobias Harris... Sure, the contract is huge, and it still is huge to this day, but I was like, he was a piece that they needed for success. And you put all that together, you got Josh Richardson for the Jimmy Butler signing trade. I thought that this team was going to come out, be successful, uh, and I thought they were going to win the East. And obviously, it didn't work that way, eliminating the first round. A lot of that is due to the fact that Ben Simmons was injured for the playoffs. I think that is super important. He was uh, all, their only All-NBA player this season, if you did not know, and he was injured for the playoffs. So, yes, they got eliminated in the first round, but if Ben Simmons is there, I might go a little bit differently. But this offseason, they have been super busy. Now, there's not going to be a team that's going to come out and make a big signing or anything because we just talked about Al Horford. We just talked about Tobias Harris. Contracts, ridiculous. And moving them is going to be a struggle. But it's not out of the realm of possibility anymore. So I made a tweet a couple weeks ago. Um, I think it was right after the Dave Yeager hire, which is kind of crazy that Dave Yeager's back um, as an assistant coach. And I was like, man, Elton Brand's putting together this God squad of NBA coaches just to cover up the fact that he's bad at his job. It was a joke, but every joke is rooted in a little bit of truth. You know what I'm saying? Al Horford, I mean, not Al Horford, but Elton Brand gave these big old contracts to Al Horford, to Tobias Harris, made a couple signings that just didn't really work out. And that was the part I was talking about bad at his job. But part of his job is the hiring process of the coaches and stuff. And so far in that, he's been doing a pretty good job. So this is how busy they've been. I got it pulled up right here. Wow, Kenny did a little bit of research. They fire Brett Brown. Shout out to Brett Brown, you know, there for the entire process. And he just... You know what I'm saying? Couldn't get him over the hump. But now they bring in Doc Rivers, who should be an upgrade. Who, who knows how much of an upgrade? Only time will tell. They bring in Dan Burke, which is very interesting because, if I'm not mistaken, Darren Burke was an assistant for Indiana. And when he was in Indiana, he basically had a whole interview where he was like, I hate Joel Embiid. He said, like, he didn't literally say that, but he was like, I really dislike Joel Embiid. He gets away with so many different things that NBA players don't get away with. He really just came out and said, F Joel Embiid, and now he's working with Joel Embiid, which is super, super funny. And I think Joel Embiid even said something on Twitter about it. Then they bring in Sam Cassell as an assistant coach, a guy that was, you know, interviewed for head coaching jobs across the league, and, well, he ended up as an assistant here. We already said Dave Yeager. They put together this assistant coaching pool. Where, like, all three of these guys have good resumes, and they're known to be good coaches, or if you, they haven't been a head coach just yet, will probably end up head coaches in the future. Now they're alongside Doc Rivers. They bring in Peter Dinwiddie, who may not be a name that a lot of y'all know, but he was supposed to come in and be like second in command for the 76ers until Daryl Morey got hired. And now Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, wow. Peter Dinwiddie is um the third man in, in charge. He's the third biggest voice in the front office behind Elton Brand and, and behind Daryl Morey. So when Darren Murray got hired, I put up a tweet. It was just a picture of me in my Ben Simmons jersey because I, y'all know this. I'm a big fan of Darren Murray, and I'm excited to see what type of stuff he can do with a new roster and everything because it was like this good old age thing. Of course, Darren Murray is the king of analytics when it comes to the NBA, but whose idea was it to go ultra small ball with P.J. Tucker at the five? Was it was it Mike D'Antoni? Was it Darren Murray? Was it ownership? Was it a combination of the three? 
obviously this team is dramatically different than what the Houston Rockets were last year. And I'm curious to see what Daryl Morey does to the team to change it. Or if it's not like trading a player here, or there, how does his analytics play come into the fact when you have Ben Simmons, when you have Joel Embiid? Like I was looking at the numbers. They were like bottom of the league, not like dead last, but like 24th, 23rd or whatever, and three-point attempts per game. And obviously, Daryl Morey is, has always been a part of a team that's going to shoot a lot of threes. So I'm curious to see if they're going to make trades or or just get Ben Simmons in the gym to have him attempt the threes or, or what really happens. That That's something super interesting. But Daryl Morey is a guy that he said, he said in an interview years and years ago, if your team – it has a 5% chance of winning a championship. You might as well go all in. And I feel as though they are going to have that type of mindset with the 76er team. This team with their young stars of Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. Again, they are young. But I think as a fan of basketball, we are looking at that combination of players and like, okay, now let's do something. Joel Embiid has been arguably the best center in the league. Maybe he's top two. I'll probably have Jokic over him personally. But if you say you had Joel Embiid, I'm not saying you're wrong. He's a top two center in the league when he's healthy. Ben Simmons is a player that we have not seen the, the mold of in a very long time. He's a very good player, all NBA third team this season. So you have two players that are like top of their positions. You want to see success, right? And last year, of course, they were one shot away from being in the conference finals. If the ball doesn't hit four times and roll in, they, they might win that game whatever but th this is a team that we're ready we are ready for the process to be completed 76ers fans are ready for the process to be completed and that's what Elton Brand had the idea of when he made the signings of Al Horford of Tobias Harris getting his extension and the trade to bring in Josh Richardson uh, for the Jimmy Butler thing that's what he had an idea of but it just wasn't executed right and now Daryl Morey is going to come in because from my understanding from what I've read Daryl Morey is now the head of things and then it's Elton Brand so Elton Brand has a new boss and shout out to Elton Brand for, I'm not going to say allowing this to happen, but I'm sure if he would ex express interest of like, maybe I don't want a new boss. Uh, the 76ers may not have hired Daryl Morey, but I think that Daryl Morey has a lot to work with here. And, and this, is what, this is what I mean. And I don't mean that in a positive way. I mean, like, it's going to be hard to make the changes to this team to make them a championship contender um, because of the contracts of Al Horford. If you're going to trade Al Horford, if you're going to trade Tobias Harris, you're going to have to attach future assets. And for a team, Philly fans are used to having a 1,000 first-round picks. This might be a situation where now you're sending those picks out because you are the one that is buying in instead of the one that is rebuilding. You know what I'm saying? So we, if, if you're going to get rid of Al Horford, you're going to have to get rid of some contracts. Some trades that I've been seeing on Twitter has like Al Horford for, for Buddy Heald. Why would the Sacramento Kings accept that at face value? Explain to me. This like 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 I just don't understand it. There's no way I'm trading Buddy Hield and two the 76ers for just Al Horford. You better throw me Shake. You better throw me Matisse. You better throw me one of those picks you have this year because this just would not be it. And if I'm not mistaken, they have like the 21st overall pick this year and a bunch of seconds like 34, 36, 49, and 52. Somebody Google that. If I got all of those numbers right, you I, I deserve a subscription from you. But they have something in that realm. And the 21st overall pick is an interesting one for this year's draft because if you did not know, this draft is not necessarily superstar oriented, but it's a lot of players in this draft that can come in and make an impact on teams. So for a team like the 76ers that are trying to compete this season, a 21st overall pick might get them a player that they can actually put into the rotation this year. But you may have to throw that up to the to the Sacramento Kings if you really want Buddy Hield. You may have to throw that to another team if you really want to get off some of these big contracts. And I've been listening to rumors, listening to podcasts of people trying to explain, like, this is the trades I would do if I'm the 76ers. And from my from what I'm seeing it is from the people I've listened to, I think they're overvaluing what Tobias Harris is on the court relative to his contract. Because obviously Tobias Harris is a good NBA player. He's a good number three option on your team. But I don't want to pay max money to a number three option if I'm any other team in the league. I've been seeing people like, let's go. How about Tobias Harris get traded to the Atlanta Hawks? Because the Atlanta Hawks have expressed that they want to go in and try to make the playoffs. Sure, bringing Tobias Harris to play with Trey Young probably gets you to the point where you're competing for a playoff spot. But do you want to be two, three years down the line and still paying Tobias Harris that contract when you also are going to have to pay John Collins eventually and you're also going to have to pay Trey Young max money because he's Trey Young? I don't want to be that team. I think there's probably cheaper options for the same level of productivity. So if I'm accepting a trade that has to do with Tobias Harris, I want more than just Tobias Harris. 
So if but if there's anybody that is willing to make things happen, it is Daryl Morey. Daryl Morey has like three or four like general managers across the league that used to work for him when he was with the Houston Rockets. So he might finesse some of his other people that used to work for him. It ha it's happened before. It's happened before. I'm just super excited to see what this team looks like next season because on, on the surface level, this starting five, if I had to put some money on it, the starting five of Ben Simmons, Josh Richardson, Tobias, Al Horford, and, and Joel Embiid will not be the starting five this offseason or this regular season. I just don't think it will be it. I just don't think it will be it. Honestly, Tobias Harris is way more effective as a four than a three. And we, I guess we saw that because eventually they did move Al Horford to the bench for a lot of this season. I don't know. But if there's anybody that can make things happen, it is Daryl Moore. So shout out to my boy, Daryl Moore. Shout out to Elton Brand for the coaching hires because he does deserve some love in that, even though he, again, gave big time money to players that probably don't deserve that. They just put themselves in a weird position because they had to pay Tobias Harris at the end of the day. They had to. They had no other choice. It was either pay him with his bird rights or lose him and Jimmy Butler for just Josh Richardson or something like that. Obviously, you're probably going to pay him because he is a good NBA player. Just, you just over, overpay him. I've been seeing, like, the idea of trading James Harden for Ben Simmons. And apparently the Houston Rockets say no to that idea immediately because they want to stay with James Harden, which I, I, if I'm Houston, if I'm Houston, and knowing that this team, that they, the current construction of this team, there's a ceiling on it. I'd be hitting that reset. And getting Ben Simmons for a reset sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. He's only 23, 24 years old. He would work with the system as far as like, hey, here's a bunch of shooters. I don't know how – Russell Westbrook and Ben Simmons will not work together. Let's agree on that. But if you're hitting the reset, you're probably going to trade Russell Westbrook eventually too. You know what I'm saying? I would do that trade. Maybe I'll ask for a little bit more on top of it, but I would do that trade because James Harden is a top four of his position all time. 76ers – Expect, expect some trades to happen with that organization this offseason is all I'm saying. Let me know what you think about the 76ers or anything else I talked about uh, related to this video. Or just drop suggestions in the comment section. You want to see me talk about the Bucks? Then sure, I can do that for five minutes or so. All right. Thank you all. Love you all. I'm out. Peace.